Dear hearers of the word, grace and peace is yours because it comes from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in whose spirit we live and move and have our very being. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Pretty bold statement, isn't it? And one that flies in the face of our ordinary experience. Life is possibility. Life is promise. Life is relationship. Life sees a future. Life is hope that where what there is now can be even better someday. But death cuts off all that. Death builds a wall beyond which the living cannot pass. Death cancels joy. Death snatches away those we love. Death kills relationships. Death closes all paths to the future. So we don't like death in any of its forms. And we take great pains to avoid it, to deny it, to ignore it, to pretend it isn't there. And Carol, not her real name, brought that home again to me this past week. I don't know Carol, except that she wrote on my son's, Sean's Facebook page the other day, not a private message, but publicly on his page. I have a question, she wrote. Are our loved ones in heaven aware of us here on earth? Does Carl know that what's happening to me? Does he know how much I miss him? Does he see me crying at night? I know God does, but what about Carl and my parents? Does Carl know how much I miss him? You can see the tears behind her question. You can hear the pain in her pinched voice. You can feel the ache of her loneliness, the deep, deep longing and nagging doubt that what might be closed forever might not be. Or more precisely, not closed forever because she hints at her belief in the resurrection, but closed for now. Does he know I miss him? Is our relationship still alive? I want it to be. But is it? Martha's feeling that same sort of pain. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day, she says. But what she leaves unsaid is, but how can I deal with the pain of now? What about my grief now, Jesus? My grief compounded because he would not have died had you been here. I believe my brother isn't gone from me forever, but what about now? He's been dead for four days. And in that culture, people thought that the soul hung around for a while, but only for three days. After that, the rot sets in. The body irreversible decays, or reversibly decays. There's no coming back. There's no way forward that will make up for that loss. And Jesus himself feels that pain. He weeps over the sense of hopelessness that death enshrouds over life. Jesus saw Mary weeping, he saw her friends weeping, and he was greatly disturbed and deeply moved. Jesus reacts in anger and frustration that death has such power over us. 
He reacts with pity for Martha and Mary and their friends. But when he comes to stand before the tomb of one he deeply loved, he weeps. And that's our clue. That gives us a hint as to what sort of God God is. That's our way forward. The Son of God, the Word made flesh, the good news dwelling amongst us as one of us, as one with us, weeps over the death of a friend and all the grief that it has caused. Jesus began to weep. And suddenly our questions about why he dawdled, our doubts about whether he really cares, our disapproval of his using the death of Lazarus to prove a point, begin to fade in the background. Jesus weeps because the people he loves are prostrated by grief and paralyzed by the loss of hope. Jesus is moved because he knows we can't move. This illness does not lead to death, he said on first hearing that news. This illness will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. And Jesus eventually does what he, we'd hoped the Son of God would do. And in doing so, reveals just how glorious God is. After they reluctantly remove the stone at Jesus' command, he gives another, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus does, displaying the final sign of God's character and power expressed through God's Son. Lazarus becomes a sign that nothing, not even death, has the power to shatter the relationship that we have with God and through God with one another. But that's not all. When Lazarus emerged from his grave, he emerged still bearing the stench of death, wrapped like a mummy in the grave clothes. And so Jesus gives one final command. Unbind him, he says, and let him go. Set him free from the trappings of death. Cut the ties that separate him from you. Set him free from the loneliness of broken relationships, the heartbreak of segregation, the immorality of prejudice. Set him free to live with you and you with him and all of you with me. And you and I, that story says, have a role to play in this resurrection promise. You and I have work to do in the light of God's promise of life with us. For God's work of reconciliation isn't God's work alone. Jesus invites us to make a difference in the world right now. Go and make disciples, he said. Be my witnesses, he commanded. Love one another not as you love but as I love. Resurrection is relationship with God. Resurrection is God's promise that nothing can separate us from God's love. Life is unbreakable relationship with God and through God with all of God's creation. Is the resurrection and the life, Jesus is the reason for our being the motivation for our doing, the basis for assurance, not groundless hope, but blessed assurance that this life, with all of its joy and all of its sorrow, isn't all there is. It isn't all there is, but it's enough for now because God is present within it. And because of Jesus, 
we know what kind of God God is. Sean answered Carol's question with wisdom and compassion. He wrote, thank you for such a brave question. I won't betray your courage with trite sentiment or pretty words. Humbly, I offer only this. I don't know the answer to your question. But I think in times like this, it's not what we know that helps so much as the assurance that we are known. The assurance that we are known. Known by the God who made us, the God who guards us, the God who walks with us wherever that path takes us, the God who will never let us go. When all supports are washed away, Jesus is still my hope and stay. He's the way forward, always. Amen.